Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Gil. Thank you all. I want to just commend the uh, Family Research Council uh, and the excellent team that they have in place uh, to put on such an outstanding event. Uh, their lead in the fight to reclaim America is unparalleled. And I know we are led in that battle by a man I consider a personal friend, the president of FRC, Tony Perkins. Tony, thank you. I also want to recognize all the young people here, the students who have come from Liberty University, from other colleges, yes, University in Virginia, from all the colleges around the country who have brought students here to stand up for the time-tested American values that we cherish. Thank you very much. You're an inspiration. This year, we are celebrating what would have been President Ronald Reagan's 100th birthday. As we remember our 40th president, I'm reminded of a quote of his regarding freedom. He said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Ever since you helped us start the fight to earn back the House, Republicans have been committed to changing Washington. We said from day one that this Congress was going to be about jobs and the economy. We have been fighting to rein in government that has grown far too large and inserted itself into almost every aspect of our lives. Simply put, we are fighting to reduce the size of government while protecting and expanding personal liberty. Many families in this country are facing difficult times. Unemployment is at an all-time high, and there is a sense of uncertainty, really, about the kind of country we will pass on to our children. When Republicans assumed our new majority, we committed ourselves to step, to step up and make the tough choices. And we're doing that with your help not because it's easy, but because it's right. We continue to say no to out-of-control government regulation, no to pork barrel spending, and no to politics as usual. We conservatives have a different vision for where we want to take our country. Our vision is an America where success is rewarded. We believe in an America that is still the light of the world, that people longing for freedom can actually look to for inspiration. Some of you might have heard me tell the story of my grandmother. She lived in Russia at a time of great persecution. She, like millions of others of her generation, sought a better life here in America. She found her way to my hometown of Richmond and as a young widow opened a grocery store and raised her two children in a tiny apartment above it. All she wanted was a shot, a fair shot at the American dream. Through hard work and determination, she knew, her li she knew life would be better for her children. If she were alive today, I know she would be blown away knowing that her grandson would be standing in front of you today as a U.S. House Majority Leader. Today, our country faces many challenges, and the President's policies have simply failed 
to address the pressing problems of jobs and our growing federal deficit. Since the President has taken office, we have lost 1.8 million private sector jobs. If nothing else, President Obama's solution to job creation has been consistent. He believes the best policy is to increase taxes on small businessmen and women, to increase taxes on the very people we need to bring back growth to our economy. We just disagree. We believe in empowering people. We believe in empowering the entrepreneurs of America. We believe in ensuring that everyone has access to a fair shot to earn their own success and to obtain the American dream like my grandmother. We believe in allowing people to realize the opportunities that they seek. And instead of actually fixing the problems, this president and his team continue to kick the can down the road. His solution to fixing our enormous federal deficit has simply been to borrow more and pass on trillions, trillions of dollars in additional debt to our children in the form of Obamacare and more stimulus spending. We cannot, cannot continue to allow this to happen. We cannot continue to kick the can down the road on domestic and international any longer. We need leadership. There is too much at stake here at home as well as for America's role abroad. In August, I had the privilege of traveling to Israel. Israel lives in a very unfriendly neighborhood. It is a neighborhood full of complexity and lots of uncertainty. But there are a few things that are certain. One, Israel is a country under siege. Two, she and her people are fighting the same war that we are. And three, we have and we always should stand by Israel. Because Plain and simple, a strong Israel provides a more stable Middle East and makes for a safer America. Yet we are seeing Israel more and more isolated. Most recently, a few weeks ago, at the United Nations. But in many other contexts throughout the world, as Iran continues to pursue nuclear weapons capability, it not only threatens Israel, but it threatens us as well. It's time once again for America to stand up and this time lead from the front. Our security and that of Israel goes hand in hand. The Jewish people are not the only religious minority under attack in the Middle East. Christians are under the same pressure. As we sit here today, Pastor Yusef Nardakani is literally fighting for his life in Iran, simply for refusing to denounce his Christianity. For us in America, it is unthinkable that someone should be put to death because of their faith. It is time for all of us to stand up against the spread of militant Islam and to stand up and lead for the Pastor Yusufs of the world.
Now is the time for us to stand up and unite. Unite as Americans against the assault that we're witnessing on the very values we cherish here at home. Earlier this year, the President chose not to defend traditional marriage. And it was House Republicans that stood up and led. And we will continue to stand up for the Defense of Marriage Act as we fight for victory in the Supreme Court this term. During the debate over Obamacare, the President promised that no taxpayer would be used to pay for abortions under the bill. Unfortunately, this is not the way things played out. And that is why next week we'll stand up again and we will bring to the floor a bill to ensure that no taxpayer dollars flow to health care plans that cover abortion and no health care worker has to participate in abortions against their will. As you all know, at the beginning of our new majority, the House moved to try and cut off all taxpayer funding to Planned Parenthood and its abortion clinics. But, but that is not the way things played out. But I can tell you, after November 2012, we look forward to a Senate and a White House that will partner with us to once and for all eliminate government funding for any and all organizations that perform abortion. You know, there is no more caring country than America. In fact, the exceptionalism of our people stems from the fact that we are prone to giving rather than taking. But this too is now under assault in Washington. As Democrats fight to maintain taxpayer funding for their favorite left-wing organizations, they've now insisted on making it harder to give to charities and faith-based organizations. Just last week, the President proposed for the second time this term a tax hike that will negatively impact groups like the United Way and the American Red Cross at the very time during this very difficult economy that the people in need are in need most. So the question for all of us as we go forward is how are we going to reclaim America's greatness? This administration's failed policies have resulted in an assault on many of our nation's bedrock principles. If you read the newspapers today, I for one am increasingly concerned about the growing mobs occupying Wall Street and the other cities across the country. And believe it or not, some in this town have actually condoned the pitting of Americans against Americans. But you sent us here to fight for you and for all Americans. You sent us here to bring about real change in Washington real change to your federal government. And we're committing to do that. We are committed to returning the federal government to one that works for you and not the other way around. <laughs> Getting America back to work means fueling a culture of entrepreneurialism, a culture of competitiveness, a culture of inspiration and optimism. Returning America to that shining city on a hill means winning the battle of freedom over tyranny. 
In that way, we will leave behind a better country for our children and theirs. I look forward to continuing this noble fight together alongside you. Thank you all very much. God bless and God bless America. Thank <laughs> you.